Money in the Bank has come and gone. Sorry, everybody. I, I've currently been dealing with some allergies acting up, but... <coughs> I wanted to make this thoughts video about Money in the Bank that just ended at the time of this video's production. So, ignoring the two... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Okay, ignoring the two ki kickoff matches, Golden Truth versus Brizongo, which I'm trying to wonder is, why is this match happening? Like, they could have done a compelling storyline and they did this. And it just makes me remember, okay, Goldust, you were at war with the authority with your brother Cody Rhodes just a few years ago, and you had a match of the year contender with Randy Orton on Raw to get Cody Rhodes' job back. And our truth you were part of Awesome Truth, and that was your best year ever. What happened? Like, like I know the storylines had to end eventually, but like, how do they get a downward spiral like this? Did they piss off management? I mean, like, people are going to pull the racist card on our troop because he's black, and Goldust is a Rhodes family member, so he's hated for that by Vince McMahon. But, like, seriously, why? And especially, I this was made at the last minute, and apparently the biggest highlight of their feud with Brizongo was... A tanning scene where they turn on the tanning heater over too much and they get sunburned and their skin's peeling and I'm like, uh, is this supposed to be entertaining because this just looks cringeworthy. And the Lucha Dragons and the Deli Boys. Yeah, what was the point? Like, the only highlight from these two matches on the pre-show was Marno Ronaldo trying his damnedest to try and make this match these matches work. Like, he managed to get some good commentary. Like, he's the only guy that was that was trying to care. Like, he was the only guy trying to care. And yet, I'm like, I'm like thinking, dude, I know you want to take this seriously. I know you want to make these, make a, I know you're one of the best announcers we got with Corey Graves and Tyne. But, it's not worth it, man. It's not worth giving these two these two matches your attention and passion. It's just not worth it. So, it's skipping those two matches because they were boring and past the time thing. Uh, we get, let's get to the official show: the New Day versus the Club versus Enzo Amore and Big Cass versus the Vlad Villains for the tag team championship. And the New Day and Enzo Moy and Big Cass cut promos before the match started. And here's my biggest beef when it comes to these Fatal 4-Way matches, for especially in Tag Team. <clears throat> is why do they have to have two guys in the ring and have to tag in the other team? Like, wouldn't it make more sense to just have four guys from each of the respect... One guy from each of the respective teams... Just duke it out in a fatal four-way bout, and then they could tag in the other guy, their teammate. Like, wouldn't that make more sense? Like, they clearly know this since they did this with the Roman Reigns, the family group, versus the League of Nations, versus the Wyatt family, versus ECW match on Raw. But they didn't do that this time, and I felt like they should have. And really, it just... Eventually, I'm trying to wonder, how's the referee keeping track of all this? Like, a lot of people in the comments section on Bleeder Report were, like, saying, like, wait, wait, who was legal? Like, is someone, who was, who was the legal man? And even after the match was over, um, people were still saying, who was the legal man? Because I don't think it was Aiden English. So, and I was generally confused, and I'm trying to wonder, how's the referee keeping track of all this? I'm like, yeah, it's scripted, and everything's all planned out, but, like, eventually something's gotta give. But, overall, it is what it is. The New Day retains, which to me says that they are going to drop the titles at SummerSlam. It seems like the appropriate time to do that, and probably either to American Alpha or Enzo Amore and Big Cass. I feel like those are the two deserving teams. So I get the feeling they're going to fight the club soon again at Battleground and then do a tag team match with either of those two teams at SummerSlam. 
So we'll see what happens. Now we get Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler round 400. Okay, this was possibly their best match together, and Baron Corbin's best match on the main roster. Though since they've had it had it happen so many times, people got bored of it and they started chanting "boring, boring," and I kind of didn't blame the audience because they've seen this match a dozen times in the short span of three months. Like, seriously, I'm pretty sure they're going to tie Cena and Orton if they keep going at this for its lack of substance in their storyline. So, yeah, that was expected. <coughs> <coughs> Baron Corbin finally got the win, and they're hinting that the feud's finally over, and I'm just saying, please let it be over, and Baron Corbin moves on to better things. Like... Right now, Baron Corbin and Paul Cruz don't have any direction. Um, they were just, like, brought up to the main roster because we need to bring people up to the main roster and bury them eventually. Um, so, Baron Corbin defeated Dolph Ziggler, and hopefully it's the end of their feud. Hopefully. But, well, we'll see what happens. Charlotte and Dana Brooke versus Natalia and Becky Lynch. It was seven minutes long. Um, they tried their damnedest to make this match work. But they just didn't. There were no really big highlights. Like Dana Brooke probably had her best match on the main roster in this tag team bout. But that's pretty much only the only thing to say. And once again... I felt Natalia and Becky Lynch were going to win because Natalia needs to get a win in this feud because she's lost two times already to Charlotte and I on pay per view, but oh, they count on the main on the main show, so uh, that so uh, that counts. But I thought this would be the end of the feud between them, and Dana Brooke and Charlotte would fight each other for Battleground, and then afterwards Sasha Banks would return and fight. Charlotte for the belt at SummerSlam. So, and after the end of the match, the other highlight was Natalia turns on Becky Lynch for no reason. Like, they try to build this up, like, oh, it's all this pent up frustration and whatnot. Like, they could bring in Tyson Kidd. Like, part of me was thinking, wait, is Tyson Kidd coming back? So they want to turn her heel since Tyson Kidd was a heel at the time and they want to bring him back as a heel. Like, that's another possibility, but. There's been no word about Tyson Kidd. Like, many words have been going around saying his career might be over, even though it's been over a year now since the recovery day was supposed to happen. So, I don't know what's going on with that. So, hmm. So, Natalia and Becky Lynch seem to be feuding. So, let's see. Charlotte fights most likely Paige, since Paige got victory on Raw. Becky Lynch versus Natalia. And yet, Shasha Banks is not doing anything. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, these all talented women. And Dana Brooke's kind of questionable. She still should have been in NXT. Like, she hasn't. She never even got a shot at the women's title down there, with with either Oscar or or uh, Bailey. But like, she never got a chance to have that standout moment to say, "Well, it's time for me to move to the main roster afterwards." So that's pretty much the end of that. Apollo Crews versus Sheamus. The big highlight was Apollo Crews doing a belly to belly suplex outside the ring, and then doing then doing a jumping moonsault off the ropes, which was awesome. And I was like, man, he was brung up too soon. Like, he has all the tools. He just needs to get a lot better on the mic. He hasn't really. He wasn't even given that much speaking time on on NXT, so they never really chance to fully develop his mic skills. So they just been letting him be quiet most of the time, and when he does finally speak, uh, people cut him off. So they I think they're trying to do that, but. Ultimately, Apollo Crews got the win, and Sheamus is once again frustrated. Like, if this was the old days, Sheamus would have bro-kicked the referee since the referee and him argued after the match, and I was like, okay, kick him. No? Why? Like, why don't you kick him? 
Like, it's clearly obvious you want to kick him. And in fact, that's what a heel does, to get heat. Just kick the referee and walk off with a smirk on your face. But no, this is the PG era. We can't have untrained professionals other than, re other than wrestlers get beat up. Well, except for Jon Stewart, but that's because John Cena runs the place. And people jokingly said that was aggravated assault. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. So, surprisingly, the next match after that was AJ Styles versus John Cena. And I was like, wait a second, why is this match happening? We still have the ladder match and Rusev versus Titus O'Neil. In fact, Titus O'Neil and Rusev should go on next. Then do AJ Styles versus Cena with the Money in the Bank match. And no, they didn't do that. Instead, AJ Styles and John Cena went at it. I barely watched it because I was bored, like, in the first 30 seconds. Be because, like, I, I watched through this and my guy was tortured because I had to stomach dealing with, I, use, I do charity, therefore you must like me, Cena. Cena and... And I, I was only watching it because I had morbid curiosity, and I must be a masochist because I clearly am in pain dealing with this. And I could go ahead and blame my allergy acting up because I watched Cena one night, and then I'm suddenly all of a sudden having allergies acting up. So I could blame him if I wanted to, but I'm not that stupid, or or that er or that arrogantly ignorant. But AJ Styles and John Cena, AJ Styles kept countering every move John Cena did, kicked out of the AA. I was expecting them to do more finishers because they did that with Kevin Owens. I was expecting that and I pro and I wouldn't really complain since, well, I'm alright with that. I've done that a lot in the video games. So, yeah, and everyone, including me, were hoping for a clean finish, like... AJ Styles gets a clean victory over Cena, and then afterwards Cena will bury him, since that was most likely the worst, best case scenario. The worst case scenario for Cena is that AJ Styles wins the feud, but we can't have that. We, we need to protect Cena. So, the referee gets knocked out again, and John Cena unofficially defeats AJ Styles, since the audience counted for them. So... Yeah. So, Cena can say, I had it be and blah, blah, blah. And then Anderson and Gallows come to the ring and beat the living crap out of Cena with the magic killer. At least it's better than calling it the boot of doom. I, I don't get that. But, um... AJ Styles gets the win after that, and... I was pissed off at that. Like, everyone was pissed off at that on the internet. And including JBL was pissed off. And if JBL, who's supposed to support the heels, is pissed off, then you know you failed here. So wait, does that mean Vince McMahon was pissed off with this finish? I'm like, he's the one that came up with it. He runs this place, officially, as everyone knows. But I'm pretty sure Cena bitch do it. Now we get the Money in the Bank contract match, and Dean Ambrose wins it. Like, there was a couple of good highlights in the match, I'm just going to say that. And Kevin Owens, I was rooting for Kevin Owens. Like, every report was saying Kevin Owens was going to win this match, and I was really rooting for Kevin Owens because, to me, he was the perfect guy to get the Money in the Bank briefcase, to be Mr. Money in the Bank, because... He could roam around, acting all cool, with the briefcase. In fact, right before the sh right before the match, he cut a promo backstage with Alberto Del Rio and Chris Jericho and says, Everything I do is great. At least that's what my mom tells me. And I'm like, oh dear God, you're so cool. <laughs> like, only Kevin Owens can make some being labeled a mama's boy and yet make it sound cool. So... They brung up his personal beef with Sami Zayn, and that is most likely going to happen with them again. They're going to do another two matches for Battleground and SummerSlam. Alberto Del Rio, uh, I think he got injured in the match. Like I think he landed his head on the turnbuckle after he jumped off after he jumped off the ropes when he got thrown off the ladder, because right before Dean Ambrose grabbed the briefcase. 
we see Alberto Del Rio being carried to the back, and this was right before the match was over, so I am going to assume that Alberto Del Rio got hurt until further notice. So I feel like the wrong guy won, and well, it's rare to see a face win the, win the match because Cena set the precedent of, well, if it's a face, then he's going to do it the honorable way. I mean, like, RVD was a face, but he decided to cash it in in a hostile ECW crowd, and they tried to make him look like a heel, even though Cena was the heel in the in the uh, ECW audience. So, yeah. But boy, was I wrong what happened later at the night. So now we have Rusev versus Titus O'Neil, and what was obviously Titus O'Neil's best match on the today that in only eight minutes and thirty seconds, like they probably like Tyson probably had his best singles match, as far as I know. And Russo is the dominant force. Tyson O'Neill was the Warren Rhino. They duped it out in front of Tyson O'Neill's kids, and his kids had to watch their dad tap out in front of them. And Russo gets on the mic and says, Your dad's a loser, and says, Happy Father's Day, everybody. And then I remember, oh wait, it is Happy Father's Day. I completely forgot about that. I kind of lost track on that. So, yeah. So, that was a solid way to get heat. But nowadays it's about, well, how far can you push somebody off in the audience if you're not, well, if you're an indie guy, you would be cheered lovely. If you were buried by Cena, you'd be cheered. Um, if you're a manufactured guy, then you'd be hated. Which is exactly what happened in the Roman Reigns Seth Rollins match. This match was confusing. That's the best word to describe it to me, at least. This match was really confusing for me because all throughout the match, the commentators were making Seth Rollins look like an underdog, citing his injury, citing his ring rust, citing how. Seth Rollins had asked to overcome the mental barriers when he tried to do that sunset flip that he got injured from. And Roman Reigns was acting like the aggressor, mocking Seth Rollins, smirking, and seemingly laughing when the audience was booing him and chanting, Roman sucks. And, like, I'm wondering, wait, what was happening? Are they doing the double turn, or are they not doing the double turn? Like, it was all confusing, like... Like, I'm a little surprised they didn't let Roman... Hey, Roman, uh, target the knee. Like, we did that with Alberto Del Rio targeting Don Ziggler in the head when he got that concussion. So, if a face can do that, even though we fail miserably with that, uh, I'm pretty sure we can make you do that. So, um, and there were times Roman Reigns went for the knee. Like, he mockingly said, this is all you got, and do you even know who I am now? And then he grabbed Seth Rollins' knee and moved it. Like, it was like, oh, this is pathetic. And I was like, so are they turning him heel or not? Because one minute he's acting like a villain, and then he's acting like a good guy. And I'm just confused here. Like, I liked the match. I thought it was a great match. But it was just confusing. Like, the entire feud has been so far. Like, Seth Rollins, one minute he's a good guy, then acts like a bad guy, then acts like a good guy. He's the underdog, clearly. Earl Reigns is the established one. And yet, they're trying to make him look like a good guy by bringing up the shield, his brotherhood being destroyed. And that's pretty much it. And then, it looked like Roman Reigns got injured, but then he didn't when Seth Rollins clearly attacked him, so I had to assume that they didn't re that that was planned. They wanted to give Roman Reigns somewhat of an excuse to lose because surprisingly he lost one two three clean. I don't like someone can make the argument he lost due to an excuse like John Cena did, and I won't disagree with you if, if you manage to get the evidence. But this was the first clean loss Roman Reigns had since. 2014 against the Y family at Elimination Chamber. That was the last time Rollins was pinned clean. And Seth Rollins won. And I was like, my mouth was wide open like, oh dear God, that means CNN Reigns is not going to happen. And then I started to think more to myself, 
Then when Dean Ambrose's music hit, I was like, he's behind you, he's behind you, he's behind you, he's behind you. Yep, he's behind you. Like, even when it's live, I can anticipate certain things, like, you would obviously see that coming. That kind of takes the fun away from it nowadays. Like, even when I don't want to anticipate, even though I don't want to pour it out, it just, I can't help it. So, Dean Ambrose cashes in Money in the Bank and beats Seth Rollins within 30 seconds after a Dirty Deeds. And Dean Ambrose is now champion. And the show just ends after that. I was expecting Roman Reigns afterwards to get pissed off and then spear Ambrose. And then afterwards grab a steel chair and slam both Ambrose and Rollins. For the heck of it, because he's pissed off that he lost. And considering Reigns lost clean, I'm getting the feeling Vince wanted to change his mind. Like, everyone was saying, oh, Reigns is going to win. And now he lost to Seth Rollins. Now people are starting to assume, oh, did Vince lose his faith in Roman Reigns? And then something clicked in my head. Wait. Dean Ambrose won. And they always pull out that BS contract clause where they are granted a rematch. Oh, no. No. No, you did, WWE. You did not. Just go and wasted the Shield Triple Threat match for SummerSlam. That is a match saved for WrestleMania. That is going to be the successor to Voldemort versus Triple H versus Shawn Michaels. And you're going to give it away at either Battleground or SummerSlam? Fuck you. Like, they're really doing this. Either it's going to happen at Battleground or SummerSlam. No, it's not going to happen at WrestleMania because, screw that, a WrestleMania-worthy main event? A dream match to many people? <sighs> screw that, let's give it away on this show. Like, on a B-level show, on one of the big four, like, if this was their second match as a triple threat, then I could buy that. But the first time it happens, it should have been saved for WrestleMania, so... I'm a little disheartened by that, but I could be wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong. But everything points, and a lot of things are pointing towards it's going to happen at either Battleground or SummerSlam. So we'll have to wait and see. <coughs> Sorry if my voice um, has been acting up and coughing you know, all, all this video. I've just had the worst case of allergies this week. I had to miss work and all that. If you notice, my videos were uploading way early in the day. So, yeah. Well, everyone, this was Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. And stay tuned for more.